And we are the Coalition Loud and Proud, Outrage Porn Free, Civilly Disobedient Media, broadcasting live at the, just after the signature ceremony of the defelonization of possession legislation that passed the General Assembly. Uh, it was actually signed into law technically weeks ago, but Governor McKee is uh, traversing the state, if you will, in an effort to not just have a ceremony and have a lot of people talk, but to, to, to lend sort of a public air, a sense of importance to some of this legislation. Joining me is no stranger to the coalition. In fact, she qualifies as a repeat offender, is Haley McKee. Um, she wants more acronyms than I can ever remember. Uh, one of the key, well, for lack of a better term, players, if you will, in, in harm reduction and just about every aspect of that universe. Haley, thanks for stopping by for a second, if you will, to join us. Uh, first of all, great T-shirt. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Excellent product placement. Uh, but just uh, talk about the bill, why it's important, and why it's important to also in inform people, educate people, not just about this bill, but the entire issue. Thank you, Pat. Do I have to press the button? Thank you, Pat, and thank you for your continued coverage of this issue. Uh, my name is Haley McKee, as Pat has said. Uh, this is a bill, now law, that we've been working on for uh, about three and a half years in, in a collaboration with the Attorney General's office um, and multiple different agencies, uh, civil rights organizations, and offices. Uh, and today was the official bill signing where Governor McKee uh, signed this into law. Uh, we've already seen some positive uh, impact from this bill or law since it's come into effect about almost three years ago, uh, three months ago rather, where people who are arrested for less than 10 grams uh, of an illicit substance are reclassified now with a misdemeanor charge rather than a felonious charge. And the reason that that's important is because uh, Felony possession or any possession of drugs is essentially a symptom of a medical condition. Uh, and what's happening for these people is once you're charged uh, with felonious possession, you're stripped of your social determinants, being housing, education, and employment. We call it like kind of the holy, holy trinity. Uh, so now these people, uh, whether they're recreational users or people who are living with substance use disorder are able to have that second chance and get back on their feet um, should, they, should they wish to uh, and, and participate in society and not have these barriers. So we're really, really grateful for, uh, for Gov Governor McKee's office to sign this, uh, sign this into law today um, and really advocate uh, along with, most importantly, the Office of the Attorney General who has really spearheaded this um, and champion champion this policy. So, tell tell us if you will. Um, there there there's been a tidal web of legislation passed, literally in the in the last few weeks. Uh, you belong to an organization that we've highlighted a number of times. Uh, talk to us about the Super PAC, uh, if you will. It's it maybe a, a teaser on anything going forward that you're going to be working on through the Super PAC uh, and, and their mission. Thanks, Pat. So uh, our organization, which is the Super PAC, which is the Substance Use Policy Education and Recovery PAC, is a nonpartisan uh, nonpartisan organization that really seeks to um, uh, put forward policy and support policy that supports people's full bottom, bodily autonomy and their civil rights. Um, additionally, we boost candidates uh, who also support this kind of legislative agendas uh, and this kind of reform. Um, we've been proud in the last few weeks to see the decriminalization of buprenorphine, uh, aka Suboxone. Uh, it was the second in the nation, right, right behind Vermont, which I believe passed about two or three earlier. That's a medically assisted recovery medication uh, that a lot of people were criminalized for uh, being caught in possession of their own medication uh, because it didn't have identifying information. Additionally, um, we're the first in the nation to uh, pass a law for harm reduction centers, which is a medical facility where people will be able to bring pre-obtained illicit substances and use under medical guidance. Um, this is a practice that is commonly done and is an evidence-based uh, means to saving lives in other countries such as Canada and several other countries in Europe. Um, we're really excited to really spearhead that. 
And today we saw the de uh, defalinization of simple drug possession up to 10 grams um, uh, signed, in, signed into law uh, in Rhode Island. So, um, you know, some of the things that we're going to look to work on, obviously, are the implementation of the harm reduction centers. Uh, the whole nation is watching us. We understand the importance of this kind of facility or facilities. Uh, additionally, we're going to be taking a look at the Good Samaritan Law Protections as a, as a, as a, a super pack. Um, AJ, do you want to, or what? We have to go. Um, and we're going to be looking towards other criminal justice reform bills, such as solitary confinement is torture. This would be um, the Stop Solitary Confinement, which is Stop Torture in Our Prisons, uh, formerly uh, the coalition known as the Stop High Side Coalition. Um, and we're going to be taking a look at life without parole laws uh, separately. So we see an intersectionality on criminal justice reform and drug policy and how it impacts people's lives and dispar disproportionately affects communities of color. So thank you, Pat. Well, again, congratulations today. You're saving lives. You're giving people lives back. There is always grace through redemption. We're the coalition. Haley, thanks again. Uh, somehow, I think we'll be talking soon. Maybe in the next five minutes. <laughs>